Today we're going to tear down this 12 inch aluminum PowerBook G4 to max out the memory at one gigabyte and install an MSATA SSD using this handy dandy adapter that we've used in the past. And if you thought the clamshell iBook was a pain to tear down, wait until you see the weird stuff you need to do to get this little piece of art apart. So get ready for screw apocalypse part two, this time with keycap apocalypse. So this is my 12 inch aluminum PowerBook G4, 1.5 gigahertz, and I love this little computer. Uh, and this computer is actually very special, not only because it was the very last and greatest of the 12 inch PowerBooks, but it was also the last PowerPC PowerBook ever sold. It was discontinued in May 2006, meaning this 12 inch PowerBook was sold brand new even after the Intel transition, uh, the first machines of which came out in January of 2006. So this was on sale for several months alongside Intel Max because this was so popular in this form factor. Uh, aside from being very powerful in a very small package, it was really great to type on. Uh, had that same full-size keyboard that the other PowerBooks and then the MacBook Pros had. So people like journalists absolutely loved this thing. And this PowerBook, uh, being the last one in the series, actually has a couple upgrades over the previous 12-inch PowerBooks. Uh, the primary one for me being two-finger scrolling and panning with this multi-touch trackpad, the first one and only one ever put into the 12-inch PowerBook. So I have a confession. I used to not understand the appeal of this. Uh, I thought that this old school four by three aspect ratio was completely silly compared to the widescreen laptops that Apple had been really leading the way with for years. In fact, when these were still new in the store, I had a titanium power book with a widescreen as my daily driver and using that computer really felt like the future compared to all of the four by three aspect ratio Windows laptops that were out there. So I thought the inclusion of this not widescreen laptop in their new lineup of the aluminum power books was totally weird. But now that I have one, I have to say that I was wrong. This feels great in your lap and it, this size just makes sense. And I can absolutely imagine being amazed at the time by this, honestly, Compared to other computers, this was a super computer in this tiny form factor. Now, my PowerBook here is in pretty good condition, but it has a couple of little issues. Uh, there's a dent on the lid. There's a little dent here on the palm rest. Um, the front is uh, dented outward a little bit, and this latch doesn't work, despite there still being the latch mechanism up in the, the top of the screen. So today, we're going to tear this apart a bit replace the hard drive with that SSD, and maybe see if there is something we can bend back into place in this front latch to make it latch shut again. But either way, we're gonna come out with an even better, super powered 12 inch aluminum PowerBook G4. Okay, why don't we start with the easy task and upgrade the memory first. And the memory is just four small Phillips head screws away. And then let's see what we have in here. Yeah, this is just a 512 megabyte PC 2700 from Samsung, which we will swap out with our one gigabyte computer bay module. All right, now let's switch to hard mode and tackle this hard drive replacement for which we have our secret weapon a detailed iFixit guide. Okay, now the most hair raising part of this disassembly is that we actually have to pop off four keys to get to the two screws that hold the keyboard down to the chassis. So we have to pop off F1, F2, and then 
F11, and F12. So here goes nothing. All right, and I don't think I broke anything, so that's good. And then there's little stickers covering the screws here that we have to peel off. And then just two Phillips head screws. Now we've just got a whole host of screws to remove to get this upper case off. All right, this next part is extremely tricky because these two guys can be kind of hard to pull out. And if you accidentally pull out the socket from the motherboard instead of just disconnecting the connector, you could completely F up your whole computer. So we're gonna be very careful. All right, we're good. All right, we are into our hard drive. All right, let's put together our enclosure and swap it into the bracket for the PowerBooks hard drive. All right, here's our 128 gig drive. Thank you for choosing Gen Gino, Geno, Genio. And then our enclosure with the tiniest screws I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the screws are inside, there we go. The tiniest screws I've ever seen in my life and a tiny little screwdriver to put them in with.
All right, there's our completed hard drive. And let's swap it over to this bracket. There we go, just like factory. Okay, let's get this thing back together. And while we're in here, I'm gonna see if there is something I can't do to this mechanism. I don't see anything obvious to bend back though. I think it's missing a piece in there. Okay, now to install the operating system back on here, I've got the two most important things I need. First, a fresh beer. And second, this OWC enclosure for Firewire and USB. And I've got a, a little SSD in here. And on here, I have multiple partitions, each with an installer for different versions of Mac OS and OS X. So let's plug this in. Turn it on and cross our fingers. Here we go. So far, so good. There we have all of our installers for OS X. I've got Leopard on here. I've got the Impossible Cat, which is the Snow Leopard beta, and I have Tiger Live. And we'll just let it finish searching. Okay. We'll select Leopard. And let's boot. All right, we're booted into the Leopard installer. And I'm really crossing my fingers that it's gonna see that hard drive. So let's go into disk utility. Come on, hard drive, there we go. 119.2 gig CHN MSATA M. Let's partition this guy. Um, I like to call this ALF. Because it's small, but powerful. 
partition. All right. Agree. And let's install to ALF. Woohoo. All right, looks like we've done it. We have upgraded our 12 inch PowerBook to the maximum 1.25 gigs of RAM. And our SSD seems to be doing just fine here in Leopard. Our CHN M SATA M3128. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.